Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We welcome the month of February, Valentine's Day, February cherry pie oh. at the QP. What other exciting things take place in Not February? Not more chocolate yet. Not more chocolate, but February you'll have cherry. to. February cherry. February. Super Bowl Leap. coming up in a few days. That's right. Leap year, so we have an extra day this month. Isn't that which, which is interesting. The uh, Bible plan that I'm reading this year accounts for the 29th. And it's, so I don't know uh, the other three years if, if you double up the 20th and 29th for this particular <laughs> plan, but it's worked out perfect for me for this year. <laughs> well, February also happens to be Canned Food Month. I know you guys probably want to know that. And this Saturday <laughs> is Eat Ice Cream for Breakfast Day. Isn't every day ice cream for breakfast day? Oh, my daughters would get along with you so well. <laughs> it's so good. Ice cream. No ice cream on TV 44 today. Maybe in the future, a cooking segment perhaps, although I don't like homemade ice cream, but it could be fun getting out the crank and the old-fashioned bucket. We could, we'll see, we'll see, but we, we do make have... snow ice cream if we get some more Have snow. you had that before? I haven't. Not very good. <laughs> but we do have some top-notch <laughs> positive sportsmanship representatives from the students in the Northwest Conference. Last week, the annual public service announcement taping right here at TV44. Bring you a special story on that impacting event. Also today on Faith and Friends, we'll tell you about an anti-bullying program that is meeting at a local church. Plus, a local author shares her new book, which offers biblical direction for 100 common situations in everyday life. First, our scripture. Jennifer? We're heading back to what is becoming a very familiar scripture here on Faith and Friends. 2 Peter 1, 2 through 8. As in the month of February, we'll be focusing on the quality of knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when I was a uh, writing teacher, I used to teach high schoolers, I used to tell them that they should not repeat a word in a sentence unless it was necessary. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a few sentences there, but do you realize how many times the word knowledge mm -hmm. was in that passage right there? God shows, is telling us something. So the impact of what knowledge can bring and, and the wisdom that can come through it. Uh, the Bible says, without knowledge, the people perish. NWC sportsmanship team, which is comprised of high school juniors and seniors in the nine schools that make up the Northwest Conference, have a desire to increase your knowledge in a positive way. They're written and last, they've written and last week videotaped four public service announcements that will soon be shown on WTLW, WOSN, and other media-related outlets. Jennifer has more. In a community of high schoolers that often creates an environment like this, the principals in the Northwest Conference are striving to build a community of unity. Five years ago, they established the NWC Sportsmanship Team, comprised of juniors and seniors representing the schools in the NWC. And the team took off. Five years later, it's providing leadership opportunities for local high schoolers. They created a mission statement, a common theme of appropriate and inappropriate cheers and conduct for players and fans, and for the past two years have created public service announcements, an opportunity to expand their desire for unity even beyond the NWC schools. Uh, about two months ago, I think it was, is when we got the groups together to, uh, again, there was, I think, I'm thinking eight, maybe nine groups, and uh, they each had to come up with their own public service announcement prior to sportsmanship or texting and driving or bullying. And uh, once they uh, finalized it, then they had to open it up to the rest of the groups, and then the top four winners out of those groups got to do it here today. The top four groups recently got a day out of school and instead spent the day videotaping with us at TV44. Four public service announcements with four different focused intents. I spent my day with the group planning a don't text and drive campaign. Other groups targeted the subjects of positive versus negative examples, putting others first, and working as a team even though they're all from different teams. 
Soon the PSAs will start airing on TV and beyond, but in reality, the entire project has an even larger goal. I think it's important because we are all together so much, but all in like a competitive atmosphere rather than working together like in this kind of way. We're working together rather than against each other. The big picture is, is that we continue to uh, push sportsmanship in our conference, which then hopefully carries on not just through the student body, but through the adults and makes experience uh, at the sporting events a much better enjoyment, I guess, for everybody. It'll represent our conference well, and as we grow up and we're coming back home and maybe raising our families in these towns, when we're the parents in the crowd, we're going to know how to act and we're going to act correctly, and we can teach our kids how to act. And you can watch for those public service announcements in the coming weeks. We're continuing with the theme of knowledge today. When you're in a difficult situation, where do you go to learn how to find your way out of it? Well, a local author started praying about that very situation, and soon God had given her 100 words. Those 100 words became the basis of her book, 100. 100 words in 100 days to a changed life and restored purpose. Dancy introduces us to author Dr. Leah McRae. Well, I am honored to have Dr. Leah McRae joining us. And Dr. McRae wrote a book that um, I've been looking through and is so very powerful. It's called The 100 Words in 100 Days to a Changed Life and Restored Purpose. I want to welcome you to the show. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so honored and just blessed to be here. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. You. 100 words. You know, um, when you think about life and our vocabulary, mm -hmm. I don't know how you came up with the 100 words yeah. to use. So take us through the process of writing. Absolutely. Actually, I didn't come up with the 100. Uh, God gave me all 100 words to write on. Is that right? Yeah, he just dropped those words into my spirit and, um, and I began uh, to seek those words uh, in the Bible, in His Word, and uh, um, and that led me uh, to um, writing each day um, regarding that word, um, what uh, God says about that word, yeah. and how we are to apply it in our lives. Um, so that was the easy part, because I didn't have to come up with that. Okay, well, <laughs> very good. Well, let's talk about you personally. Yes. Um, you are from the Cleveland area. I am, I am. And you went to school at Ohio Northern. I did, I did. Um, I went to law school in Ohio Northern. Uh -huh. um, I graduated uh, from there from law school. I started a practice here in Lima, and um, um, then the Lord uh, just spoke to me one day about writing. Um, a little bit about my story, I, um, I had some tragedy in my life. I found myself a single mom of six children. Wow. Uh, my ex-husband, uh, he went to prison, okay. and um, I mean, it was actually, uh, I was the one that had to turn him in. Uh, okay. So I found myself, you know, single, um, with six kids, didn't have a job, lost everything I had. Um, but God had provided me with a scholarship for law school. It kind of just dropped out of the sky. That's amazing. And uh, um, so that's got how I got to Ada, ONU Law School. And, um, and this book is, um, I wrote it because I know that there are people, you know, that are out there um, that find themselves, um, they don't know what happened. I um, mean, you know, life just happens. That's and you, for sure. Um, you look up one day and everything is different. Mm -hmm. You know, things can change in a hurry. People are people, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But we have a God who knows you, you know, and knows what he has put in you and knows the purpose that he has for you in your life. And um, he will never leave you or desert you. And that has... Um, been the driving force in my life and it has gotten me through uh, um, some very bad days you know mm -hmm. but he has always been there and he is a restorer I'm so blessed yes. um, he gave me back everything that I lost and even more oh, um, so that's uh, the story that I try and tell in 100 well, I was um, looking through your book, and I chose the 24th because we are taping this on November 24th. Okay. <laughs> and um, the word um, that you that you and God yes, chose yes. Are, is wilderness. Yeah. And um, wilderness is defined as any desolate tract, a wild mm -hmm. and uncultivated region, a bewildering yeah. mass. Yeah. And this struck me today because, um, you know, with the state of affairs around the world, mm -hmm. I think we all feel like we are going through a wilderness yes, right now. And absolutely. we don't know how to survive yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and then on a personal level, it does mm -hmm. come down to our family lives mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and what's in our heart and our Amen. soul. Amen. You know, so yeah. what, 
what in here mm -hmm. um, and, and what message did you get from God to help yeah, us through yes, those times? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, that's really good, uh, the word uh, that you uh, chose for today because wilderness, like you said, um, you know, uh, you can really find yourself in, in a place of uncertainty. Mm. Um, you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's happening around you. You know, things uh, seem to be just going astray everywhere yeah. you look. But the thing about that is, you know, what God wants us to know, that he knows the plans that he has for us, mm -hmm. you know. And although we can't see everything, um, he is there and he knows our destiny. He knows the purpose that he has for us. And all we have to do is follow his leading because um, although there are trees, you know, that are hi hiding our view, you mm -hmm. can say, he sees the path uh, that we need to be walking on. And if we'll just follow him, you know, just take his direction, no matter what it looks like, because um, things can look bad. Yeah. You know, but no matter what it looks like, we have a God who is for us, he loves us, and he has a plan for our lives. And that was what he gave me as far as in wilderness. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm for you and I'm gonna get you through that track of desolate land to a fruitful place. Absolutely. You know, to a good place. Some pl so. some place that will prosper us. Amen. And, you know, Amen. Not to yes. hurt us. Yes. So um, well Leah, I can tell that you have um, personal testimony um, to to lend this book and um, I'm just thrilled to have met you. Thank you so much. Where can we find it? Um, well, it is available on Amazon.com. Okay. Um, it's also available at Gifts of Joy here oh, in Lima. Oh, good. Okay. Yes, yes. And then I have my on my website. Um, it's ltmacraybooks.com, and you can also get it there. Okay. Absolutely. Very good. Dr. Leah McRae, thanks so Thank much for joining so us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been All a right. pleasure. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Back to you, Jen. This is a copy of that book. I really like the fact that uh, she broke down the hundred words into each chapter. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling, let's just say, um, let's say you're, you're struggling, you feel like you're in chaos. Mm -hmm. Well, day 80 is about chaos mm -hmm. and it's speaking biblical truths into how to, to stand with God through that and see through your situation with him. Also good thing, I mean, positive situations. Maybe you're in a worshipful mood or maybe uh, you just uh, have a, a positive desire, you know, really very simple, short chapters that um, I think I think it's definitely worth reading. Yeah, you can use it as a daily devotional or mm -hmm. as you as you uh, yeah, like you said it's broken down into different topics. So whatever it is that you're struggling with or something that you need to be encouraged by, go to that table of contents, look that topic up and it's right there and something to, to get you knowledge, get you thinking about mm -hmm. uh, what the Bible has to say about those situations. Now speaking of words and knowledge, the 2016 Faith Challenge continues and this month we are moving to the quality of knowledge. Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. There's just some pretty harsh mm. words there, but God is telling us that we are to get knowledge and we are to seek godly knowledge. So as we focus into knowledge this week, as we're going to be, or this month actually, we're going to be taking a look at that. You know, there's a lot of knowledge from all kinds of places. Not all of it is good. Well, you know, the MacArthur Study Bible, when talking about knowledge, points out that Christianity isn't based on mysticism. It's based on rational, revealed, historical-based facts. And that the knowledge of those historical-based facts, those rational facts, lead to a deeper understanding of God's will for us, which leads to a deeper understanding of our own purpose. And spiritual growth all comes back from knowledge. We have all this knowledge right in front of us. It might be on your phone, on your tablet, uh, in, in the hard copy of your Bible right there. So many generations didn't have that text that they could pick up and find a situation in the Bible that applies to their lives. It was all oral. You know, the, the traditions were passed down from one family to another, but now we have it at our fingertips. You have the opportunity to access the knowledge from the Holy God. Are you taking that step? Are you taking the 2016 Faith Challenge? Let us know by sending an email to faithandfriends at WTLW.com. Of course, we're focusing on 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8 this year. Last month, we focused on the topic of virtue. How was that month for you? We'd love to hear what kind of impact that had on you. This month, of course, is knowledge. Call us or write to us. Simply say, I'm taking the Faith Challenge. This is what God is teaching me. That way we can pray together throughout the year. Well, late last month, individuals at Pandora Missionary Church had the opportunity to gain knowledge in regards to creation. Scott Gillis of Creation Ministries International spoke three times. Here at TV44, we have an opportunity to share one of those workshops with you. 
Dinosaurs and Fossils, Amazing Evidence for Creation, will air February 10th at 9 p.m., again February 12th at 9 a.m., and then February 13th at 12.30 p.m. right here on TV44. You also have the opportunity to listen to the podcast of Gillis' other two presentations by visiting PandoraMissionaryChurch.org. Creation Ministries International is the producer, producer of Creation Magazine Live, which is seen weekly right here on TV44. Well, here's a topic that's been in the news recently and in the past few years, but continues to be an issue in schools everywhere, bullying. A local high school freshman realizes the solution to bullying has to involve more than just a program or an in-school seminar. God needs to be involved as well. She's starting a new anti-bullying support group, which meets downtown weekly at a downtown Lima church. Dancy joins us again, this time introducing us to Megan Hiddle. Growing up today is not easy. It never has been, but it seems with social media and everything, all the images coming at us today makes it especially hard. And joining me now is Megan Hiddle. And Megan has started an anti-bullying campaign in um, Allen County. And I love the title because I think it's catchy. It, it draws people in. It's called No Bull, Just Faith. So welcome to you. Hi, thanks Hello. for having me. Yeah, so Megan, you are a freshman. 15 years old at Perry High School, and you have taken on quite a project. So can you um, kind of take us back to how this all started? Um, it started in third grade. Um, these girls would bully me because my hair was weird or because I didn't dress like them, and it was really bad. I still deal with it today, but it's not as bad as it was back then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, listening to your story, I can tell it still hurts. Um, I can tell that, um, you know, that this is something you'll never forget, I'm sure. Um, but you are a survivor and you are dealing with it um, through God's help. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. How has your faith helped you? Um, my faith has helped me grow and be more than I was when it started. I was happy that God was there telling me that you are made in my image of you and I put you through these battles because I know in the end you will come out the victor and you will be strong. Exactly. Do the right thing and the right thing will happen to you and, and I just wish um, we could all understand that. So um, you have a, a new campaign and you are meeting now on a weekly basis at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. Um, what are you hoping that um, your fellow teenagers will learn from that? I am hoping that not just those who are bullied, but also the people that may have guilt about bullying come to your classes, don't you? I do, but it takes a while for them to build up the trust to say, I'm bully I'm being bullied and I need help or I'm the bully and I need help on how to stop so nothing else can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of trust that comes into this um, this whole project. So um, as you said, you're starting off small, but um, you're hoping that as you tell your story, others will feel comfortable sharing theirs. I do because it takes one person to stand up to help in bullying, but it takes a army to actually say, well, we don't want it back and we're done with it. And it'll take a while, but I know that with God by my side, we're going to be able to end bullying. Absolutely. Well, if anybody is interested, um, you know, if, if your story has reached them and, and they're thinking, I really would like to help you and help others and help myself, um, where can they find you then? Um, they can find me at St. Mark's um, every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30. I'm there. I'm down waiting. If you want to come and talk to me about you being the bullied or you... Feeling you anger. being bull mm -hmm. bullied or feeling anger, um, I'm there. I will set aside whatever I'm doing and I will talk to you and I'm there. And you can also reach me through the church or through email or Facebook. I'm always going to be there to help those who need help. Okay. All right. Sometimes it just takes one person and hopefully you're it. So. 
So thank you very much, Megan, for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. All right, back to you, Jen. Well, just like at the No Bull Just Face Support Group, there is strength in numbers, especially encouraging strength, which sometimes is really something needed to get through a trying time. The annual Churches of God Central Conference Women's Ministry Conference is coming up March 4th through 6th at Weinbrenner Seminary in Finley. This year's theme is Dream Big. Do you have dreams? Do you ever think they're beyond reality? Matthew 19, 26 says, With man this is impossible but with God, all things are possible. Dream Big is the theme for the 2016 Churches of God General Conference Women's Conference, taking place March 4th through the 6th at Weinbrenner Seminary in Findlay. It's two and a half days of prayer, laughter, worship, and learning, with an overall desire to send the message that the messages God puts in your mind and heart are not impossible. So if we know the fullness of God's love, that helps us be able to get past our current search situation and have those big dreams to pray for things that we know only He can orchestrate in our lives. While many women have big dreams, they also have busy schedules. But the ladies organizing this year's event recognize that God can do life-changing things when we are first willing to step back and take a rest. Well, uh, certainly we've seen how complicated it can be, how uh, much planning has to go into being able to take this time for ourselves. Um, but it is so important to be able to hit that pause button, um, to be able to say, you know, I need to spend that time with God and with other women in fellowship that is unlike any other opportunities that I get during the year. Um, even if I'm actively involved in my church or um, very involved in my career or my children's lives, um, it is so different to be here. I always feel like time just stops when we're in this building um, and that, you know, we can do life together and we can grow and we can learn and we can cry and we can feel um, in ways that outside these walls we're just not really able to. Or if we are, people say, well, just get over it. Or, you know, can't you, can't you just stop that? Here it's okay. This year's event features speaker Dr. Brenda Salter McNeil, Associate Professor of Reconciliation Studies in the School of Theology at Seattle Pacific University. Kim Kintner, founder of Hope for Love Ministries, singer-songwriters Sue and Jeff Duffield, and comedian Joyce Sankey. Plus a variety of breakout sessions intended to cater to women of all ages, interests, backgrounds, and situations. We are really trying to appeal to that whole age spectrum. Um, traditionally, we have seen um, more of the older generation um, because I think younger people look for different things in conferences. Um, but as we've made some changes, we've really tried to appeal to all women. Um, women from teenage years to 100. Anybody in between, um, trying to find things that will really enrich their lives and bless them um, because we all need to be filled. This is the 25th year for the Churches of God Women's Conference, an event that has seen great expansion since the start. It's beyond Churches of God denomination. We've seen women coming in from um, the Assembly of God Church, uh, Methodist Church, Catholic Church. So we're just grateful that women have said yes to coming away for a weekend and being able to see the unity that is a part of who God is in, in our lives. The deadline for early bird registration is February 20th. Female pastors and pastors' wives are eligible for 25% off their registration price. And finally, $45 scholarships are available, but you only have until February 14th to apply for a scholarship. To do so, email Catherine E. Griffith at gmail.com. For more information about the entire event, go to womenforgod.org. Tickets, tickets, tickets. We're still giving away tickets to two great events. The first is a set of two to hear Luke Zamparini speak. He's the son of Louis Zamparini. Luke will be at the Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert March the 6th. Second giveaway for tickets are two tickets to hear Natalie Grant sing. Contemporary Christian singer will also be at the Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in March, March 20th to be exact. And our third giveaway is a set of books that were written by Natalie Grant. They're adventure stories published by Zonder Kids and are aimed toward girls ages 8 through 12. Much more on the books in the week to come. My girls are reading them. They say they're really good books. All right, Mark, how does someone win? Well, just go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Click on Contest, enter the requested information, and indicate which contest you are entering. The drawing for Luke Zamperini will be on February 19th, and the drawing for the Natalie Grant items will be on March 11th. Just showcasing these nice little books.
They can't tell what they are because you're moving them around. <laughs> <laughs> Time now to say thank you to you. Yeah. One of our most exciting times of the day is we get to thank you. We're excited about that. Uh, recently, our Continuing Christ campaign came to an end. It was a very successful campaign. Thanks to folks like the Millers from Lima for their donation. John from Port Jennings with a gift and the Derringers in Herod with a donation as well. How about Paul in Butler, Indiana, Howard and Elida, and Ruth right here in Lima. We appreciate your partnership through prayer, through volunteering, and your financial giving. Just a reminder, it's never too late to partner with us financially. Possibly you missed out on the Continuing Christ Mission campaign. Here are the simple ways to connect with TV44 in the areas of giving. Donate by mail or in person here at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. You can donate over the phone with your credit card, very secure at 419-339-4444. Online, of course, at WTLW.com, or you can sign up for monthly automatic withdrawal by emailing contact at WTLW.com. You can also call us to find out how to do just that. We leave you now focusing once again on the quality of knowledge with the 2016 Faith Challenge. 2 Peter 1, 2 through 8, as in the month of February, we'll be focusing on that quality of knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to be remembering that topic, that the scripture at home, but remember knowledge in general. How can how can you be seeking out God's knowledge in your life starting this week, this month, and continuing for years to come? Well, for all of us here at TV44, thanks for joining us this week on Faith and Friends. We'll see you again next week.